Hi, welcome to Greg Stone Yard. Today I'm going to take you through making this stone fountain. This stone was quarried in Havelock, Ontario. It's a red granite. The trade name was Belmont Rose. Uh, I got this about 15 years ago. And it's been sitting in my yard ever since, so it's finally time to uh, turn it into a fountain. Here I'm just uh, cutting a flat top and bottom. And here I'm showing off my uh, strength. <laughs> uh, just uh, putting the waste here on a pallet to take it away. Get a look at the uh, quality of the cut from the uh, wire saw. After cutting the flat uh, bottom, I uh, drilled all the way through. It was approximately 77 inches. You can see here, I got a fairly long core out of it. I think this is uh, the longest core I've done yet. Just had the core drill here rigged up and I want to see what my feed rate is. Uh, so I marked on the drill there the inches and uh, I'm just going to go through this whole piece. It should go 12 inches and then I'll see how long. I'll start a timer on my, on my watch and uh, see how long it takes to get through. Okay, so I'm starting now. We finished just under uh, eight minutes there. So now I'm just doing the rest of the drilling. Uh, the process is I uh, move the machine to the next hole. Then I mark where the hole is going to be. And I use a uh, handheld grinder just to start the hole because the, otherwise the long bit has a tendency to walk across the stone. So I'm just taking some of this glass media and uh, forcing it in the hole here between changes. I'm doing that to, uh, to help sharpen the bit because these are concrete bits and the bond is a hard bond versus you want a soft bond for granite. And this abrasive just helps uh, expose the diamonds, although it's looking pretty I think it's looking pretty good right now. But I'll just do this every 12 inches now. So this ended up being a solid day of drilling. Each hole took about 45 minutes to an hour to drill and there was uh, 12 holes. Here's all the holes, all drilled, ready for uh, diamond wire cutting. Here's a look at the uh, cores from all those holes. Now it's time to start wire sawing. And if you watch closely, you can see the wire break right now. Boom. Slow motion there. And that's, uh, the dust is actually just from the rust on the brake rotor. You can see it's fairly violent when it breaks. And now that I fixed the wire, it's time to start cutting again. I believe I started around nine o'clock in the morning and finished just after uh, 10 p.m. at night. So a good solid 13 hours of cutting. I don't really take breaks during that time. It's uh, the saw's running pretty much nonstop except for when it's moving from one cut to one cut. So here's 13 hours compressed into just over a minute.
Just finishing up the cut here. It's about 10 o'clock at night. You can see what it looks like cutting in the dark. And probably right now you're glad that I'm not your neighbor. So today I'm going to remove all these pieces and take a grinder, go in and smooth out the stop start point. Cutting went mostly okay. Uh, you can see right here a bit of a screw up right there. This came in and then dived down. That's because this wheel here came loose and dropped down. So one little screw up and then I'm not quite sure now I'm gonna smooth out this one uh, because I can't get a like regular size grinder in here but anyway uh, we'll see how this goes Just finished uh, taking the waste pieces out. So now I have to take a grinder, grind all these areas down. That's where it starts and stops. Um, so the reason the wire can't take this out is uh, it's already cut just above here and so what happens is the wire comes this way it starts coming it starts this way cuts around goes around then when it's coming back this way uh, because above it's already cut uh, the wire just kind of pops up and over top this stop, stop point anyway I have to clean that with the grinder and hopefully move this without breaking it Just got a uh, flush mount diamond blade mounted to the grinder and I'm just using it to clean up the wire saw cut. So I ground down all the stop start points just to make it smooth so you can't really tell how the uh, cut. Uh, the problem I have now is these smaller areas. The uh, grinder won't fit in here so I can't grind them down. So I'm going to try <laughs> with this contraption. Got a reciprocating saw. And I put a piece of diamond wire on here. And uh, I'm gonna try that, see how it goes. Well, it worked somewhat. I'm not gonna call it a success though. Uh, that was about 10 minutes or so. And the problem was it's a lot of vibration and uh, it's hard to push pressure against here while you're uh, moving it in just because the blade's so thin here. I might try a modification with this, bring it up so I can get pads on here, and then maybe I'll try that instead. 
but for now I'm gonna come in with this this blade and just take off the first couple inches down in here. Here I am just flipping it up so I can start to polish the top. And this is the way I came up with uh, ringing it up. So I was hoping it wouldn't break anything. Luckily I didn't. And then right now, I got a Amazon delivery showed up just as I'm uh, flipping the stone. How are you, sir? Good, how are you? Bye. Polishing up uh, this fountain, and uh, I stopped at uh, 200 grit to fill in some some cracks. Probably hard to see, but I use this this epoxy. And when I mixed it up, I threw in a bit of dust from uh, cutting the stone. It came out as a it's like gray Maybe, uh, better than the uh, kind of white that that dries to I probably put way too much on made a lot more work for myself uh, so I'm gonna try it with the 200 grit that I'm at but I have a feeling I have to go down to 100 grit to get this stuff uh, down quickly I hate using it uh, but sometimes the stones just have these fissures in it, so I need to fill them in. Okay, so just got done going over those areas where I had the epoxy. There's a filled crack there. I had to go back to, down to 100. Otherwise it just wouldn't uh, come off. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. I'm at uh, 200 now, so next up is 400. Just finished 400 grit. There's a good example of the uh, epoxy. So just going over it now, looking for any imperfections before I go on to the next grit. Next grit. <laughs> Sorry, next grit. Uh, but so far, looking good. So next grit, 800. So just finished 800 grit. You can see there's a slight shine starting. You can see a slight reflection there. Close up here. So on to 1500. Just finished 1500. Bit of a shine coming up now. So 
So, on the 3000. So this is 3000 grit. Let's see the shine there. Close up here. So I've got a 6,500 grit and then buff. So I'm debating whether to just go to the buff or use the 6,500. So I went straight to the buff and uh, you can see here, I run the buff pad dry and I put a fair amount of pressure into it so I can build up some heat and help bring out the shine. So here it is all shined up. You can see that final buff really brings out the shine. I hope that comes across in the video. But you can see there's a nice reflection in the surface. Take here a look at the uh, areas I I filled in without epoxy. Hopefully you can see that on camera right there. Right there is the uh, example of a small area I filled in. You can see it blends pretty well. Again, I'd prefer not to use it, but I think it just uh, helps have a consistent surface. getting ready to apply a sealer so after uh, I finish buffing with a pad like this uh, I take some uh, acetone and go over it and uh, there's lots of uh, you can see like the black residue that comes from the resin in this pad that's left on the, the stone because I, I run it dry uh, they really say you're supposed to use it with water, but I find I can't get the shine to come out as nice if I use it with water. If I use it dry, the heat helps bring out the, the shine in the stone. Anyway, so after I clean it off with acetone and get all the residue from uh, the pad off, uh, I then use this Ajir Color Enhancer Sealer. And uh, I'm just about to apply that now.
just finished uh, applying the Ajir sealer color enhancer. It's a bit, a bit uh, deeper color, brings out the reds a bit more. And when you apply it, you just, uh, it's pretty easy. You just put it on with a paper towel, rub it in. And then, uh, depending, as long as you're not out in the sun, uh, leave it on for a few minutes and then just uh, take off the excess with a clean paper towel. Pretty straightforward. One thing I tried new on this, uh, is after sawing, I tried a pad like this. It's flexible, um, but it's a, a metal matrix versus a pad like like this, which is a resin matrix, which is the the regular buff or uh, polishing pad. So this is thirty grit. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, that's thirty grit. And so it's fairly aggressive, which is what you want right after sawing. Um, this I used on like all the edges and everything, as well as the flats. And I started with, uh, for that disc, I used a uh, an aluminum backer pad. So a solid, essentially backer pad. And that's to, to help flatten it out and get a nice even surface. And then after I switched from this uh, heavy metal matrix to the regular pads, I then just went with a, a rubber backing pad. And that just allows it to follow any, any dips and that easier. And the reason I, I try, wanted to try one of these is at the beginning stages, it's really hard on the pads, uh, especially when you start doing edges like this, when you're rounding over like that. It, uh, as you can see on this pad, it really takes, really wears the pads fast. So with this metal matrix, because it's nice and aggressive, you don't have to worry too much, and they're thick as well. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, wearing out the pad as much. Although these are a lot more expensive. Direct from China, you can get these for a few dollars each. And I believe this was 30 to $35 Canadian each, including shipping. Yeah, so then after I use this, I just switch back to the regular pads and use those for the rest of the uh, polishing. Okay, so what I've done is I put a strap all the way through the bottom here. And it goes all the way through the hole for the uh, fountain, for the water. And it comes out here, so I'm just going to use that to lift it that way. Uh, I don't have to worry about putting any strain on the on this area up here. So I think... That should work well, but we'll see. All right, so the uh, fountain is done and just here's some video of it with uh, water running through it. So I hope you uh, like this video taking you through the process of creating this fountain. If you like it, please hit the thumbs up. Thanks for watching.